Hello everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who book review on the Horse Productions. In today's review I'm going to be starting off a brand new series of reviews as I take a look at the latest Doctor Who target novelisations from both classic series and new series Doctor Who. All of the books as a part of this series, a whole set of seven books, are available to order online now and the recommended retail price is £7.99 and as of all the other Target books released as a part of this series currently, they will only be published in paperback. Now, of course, when they announced that new series Doctor Who was going to be joining the Target book range a number of years ago, I was very excited, especially over the last few years, I've really grew an appreciation for the Doctor Who Target book series. And to be honest, more than anything, I was just looking forward to seeing new series Doctor Who within the Target book format, featuring some brand new exciting artwork, but also the retelling of some rather infamous stories in there as well. As you can already tell, in today's review I'm going to be taking a look at one of the new series books as a part of the latest series, and that is Dalek as written by Rob Sherman, featuring Christopher Eccleston as the Ninth Doctor and Billy Piper as Rose Tyler as a part of Series 1 from 2005, a very special era of Doctor Who for me. As for me as a Doctor Who fan, that is where it all began. So naturally, I was very excited to see yet another Ninth Doctor story making its way into the Target series. So before we move on to the actual contents of the book itself, let's take a look at the product. Now, as per usual, Anthony Dry has returned to contribute a really lovely piece of artwork, and it basically parallels that of the original traditional Target novelizations from the 70s with artwork by Chris Achilios. So at the very top, you have the Doctor Who logo, which has been embossed in a golden typeface, and then we have the Target logo there towards the top of the title of the story, and the writer in red. At the very bottom, we have a really lovely piece of artwork that has been created. Of course, the central focus is the Metaltron Dalek itself, and a really lovely yellow tint has been applied over the top of this to really make the Dalek pop and stand out. Of course, we have a few red chains coming around the side, almost looking as if it's bursting from the Dalek as it comes out of its cell. And then surrounding this, we have loads of fiery bits and oranges coming out of sparks and energy beams. And then, of course, we have the Ninth Doctor there, rather brilliant likeness to that of Christopher Eccleston. And the way that his head is in a bubble kind of reminds me of the target novelization cover for Genesis of the Daleks, which I don't know if that's an intended nod, but is very cool. And then of course on the back we do have a usual write-up about the story itself, another photo of the Ninth Doctor. And what I really like is the series is continuing the style of having the air date of the story at the very bottom, be the 30th of April 2005. The actual spine itself, of course we have the Doctor Who logo and the target design once again, along with Robert Sherman and BBC Books. Overall, the printing itself is actually a nice cream finish, much like like the Target reissues that came out a number of years ago, and overall looks lovely alongside the other Target books released. Rob Sherman is without a doubt one of the best things to happen to new series Doctor Who. His contribution is massive, reintroducing Doctor Who's most well-known foe to a new era of Doctor Who fans, and withstands the tests of time even to this day. Twelve series have concluded, and yet the vast majority of Doctor Who fans are quite likely to regard Dalek from Series 1 as one of the strongest Dalek stories, arguably ever. Coming from an idea originally displayed within the Big Finish audio drama Jubilee, also written by Rob Sherman, Dalek has quite a number of narrative changes. Flash forward to 2021, and the Dalek target novelization once more reinvents this legendary story. I was absolutely delighted to see that Dalek was going to be getting the target book treatment, especially because it was being penned by the writer himself. I knew that we were in a safe pair of hands, and boy does Rob deliver. On our screens, the story of Dalek is a base under siege, one Dalek travelling about killing as many people as possible. It's a lot of corridors and lots of concrete looking sets, and frankly, had this book been a direct retelling of the TV serial, it wouldn't have been much to praise nor exciting to read. And that's not to say that Dalek is a bad story, of course it isn't, it's an absolutely brilliant story, but it is a very, very visual one. The Metaltron being tied up within its cage, the endless extermination sequences, that desire for sunlight as everybody is living miles underneath the surface of Earth in Utah's desert, are all concepts that are very difficult to deliver with the same impact in prose. Therefore, this target novelization expands upon what we see on screen. This book 
is more than merely just a retelling. We get into the hearts and minds of each character who contributes to the story, digging deeper into the past and explaining how exactly we get to the situation that we see depicted on screen. If anything, the TV plot is merely the tip of the iceberg in an otherwise political, emotional, poetic, romantic, thrilling, murderous series of events. In all honesty, I had absolutely loads of uni work to do, and even then, I read Dalek within two sittings. I simply could not put it down from page one. As soon as you think I would like to hear more from that specific character, Sherman delivers in the next chapter with exactly that. It's almost as if he is in your head, giving you exactly what you want as a reader. And for me personally, it gave me everything that I wanted to know from this story. It's an adventure that delivers on so many levels. Admittedly, I have witnessed Dalek probably about 50 plus times over the past 15 years, and yet this story still feels refreshing and new. There are a number of moments throughout this target novelisation which copy lines directly from the TV production, and that draws the reader's mind back to the TV story. For me, I could hear those individual characters stating these brand new lines, and getting new material for characters that I've watched and adored at the age of six all these years later is simply so exciting. Especially when that brand new interaction is between the Ninth Doctor and Rose, a TARDIS team which plays such an integral part of my childhood. Rob Sherman is undeniably an incredible storyteller, and his books beyond the worlds of Doctor Who present that in heaps of rich character and plot. Many of those traits leak into this book also. I was rather surprised by the amount of body horror and violence that this story details, such as the bleeding fluid dripping from the Dalek casing after yet another day of torture, and a Van Staten employee literally being engulfed in flames, as well as the violent backstory of a child ripping off the wings of flies and that said child eventually became Van Staten's henchman. It's moments like this which make Dalek such a thrilling read, although admittedly might be a little bit disturbing for the younger audience. One of my personal favourite aspects of this book is that we get into the head of the Dalek. We see things from his perspective, a child of the time war that is solely bred for war, and that feeling of being alone within the universe. At some points throughout the narrative, you do feel a little bit of sympathy for the Dalek, which feels completely wrong as a reader, and that in itself parallels the Dalek's own personal dilemma after being infected by Rose. Emotions and responses to the past seem to be quite a prominent theme throughout this story, the Dalek trying to find the rest of the Dalek race, the Doctor's desire to end the Time War once and for all, and Rose's relationship with the Doctor, which certainly develops throughout this story into a new chapter. The book takes the narrative of the TV serial and cuts it up into sections, splicing in new scenes from the past and present along the way. We get to see beyond the underground bunker of Van Staten's vaults, which is integral in letting this story blossom into something truly special. Heck, I could see this book being adapted into a full-on budgeted movie. Dalek is littered with references to past and future, none of which I'm going to disclose throughout this review, as I am cruel like that. There's some great surprises, character development, and rich storytelling, all concluding into a piece of absolute perfection. I highly recommend. So now the main part of the review is over, I'm going to end off this video with just some general thoughts about the book itself and what I was thinking as a reader when kind of seeing this story through a brand new lens because this episode does have a lot of brand new content, as I've already mentioned, lots of references, lots of additional scenes and lots of brand new interactions. But one of my personal favourite things about this book and something that I've not really spoke about as of yet is Van Staten himself because within the story there there is a lot of brilliant moments with Van Staten. I think that the guy that actually plays him within the TV show does a very good job. There's lots of different scenes with him where he's really confronting the Ninth Doctor, and there's quite a lot of toxic moments between him and the Doctor, both of which kind of have this relationship with the Metaltron slash Dalek, and of course they do clash horns quite a lot throughout the story as well. This time round, we have less of that interaction within what we get to see within the story, of course, the Van Staten vault itself, but 
we get to go beyond that. We get to see a little bit of Van Staten's childhood and kind of his surrounding domestic life that shaped the person who he is now. So I think that that really adds something to this story because within the TV episode, Van Staten is undeniably a villain. He's a guy that very evidently has very different thought processes to that of the Doctor. And as a result, he's just portrayed as a villainous kind of person that has his mind wiped at the very end of the story. Kind of his own technology is used against him. And Staten is surrounded by his aides throughout this story, as well as the various military personnel, the likes of Diana Goddard. However, their backstories have kind of been changed in context. There is a number of characters that we get to see a little bit about their life in a microscopic level, and again, how they became to be a part of the Van Staten vaults in the middle of Utah. And as a result, that adds an additional layer to this story once again, because we don't just have interactions between the Doctor and the support characters. This time round, the support characters become equally as important as the Metaltron, as Van Staten, as Rose Tyler, as well as the Doctor. We also have a little bit of development for Adam as well. Of course, within the actual story, he's kind of just a nerdy, partially annoying character. And again, within this book, that is toned down a bit. He's a little bit more respectable. He's got a bit more to him. He's got a bit more of a backstory as well, with a few additional chapters dedicated to him. And as a result, his character benefits. And it'll be interesting to see if we eventually get an adaptation of the long game, if that character development continues, because it will be really nice to see that consistency intertwined throughout the entirety of this series. Once fingers crossed, it's eventually all novelised. So in conclusion for Dalek, I really do love it. I know that this is the first book that I've read as a part of the current 2021 series. However, I can't lie, this book has set the bar high and I will be very, very surprised if another book overtakes it as the number one for this current set of releases because it just has some brilliant moments. And if anything, even if you've seen the story over and over again, this book contributes something new to this serial and adds more than enough new content to make the price tag most certainly worth it. So if you are a fan of Doctor Who Target books, The Ninth Doctor, or this story in general, this one is an essential purchase. So with that, that does of course conclude yet another Doctor Who review. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned on the host productions for brand new Doctor Who content each and every week, as well as the continuation of this series of reviews, taking a look at the brand new Doctor Who target novelizations. I think the next target review will probably be The Pirate Planet, featuring Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor, as a part of the Key to Time series, as that is the book that I am currently reading. So thank you very much for watching this review, really hope you have enjoyed it, and I will of course see you all next time. Bye for now.